groups have had since uh, March of 2020 when a certain event happened so uh, I'm glad that you guys can be here you know normally we would love to be in you know a different space but uh, you know this is what we have and I hope you enjoy it uh, I really enjoyed you know working with both of these groups I manage both of them oh yeah my name is Nicole Schwartz but I probably should have said that um, so with that being said none of these groups would be possible without the direction of joseph bonville he has arranged basically all of our music 
And uh, without him, these groups would not be where they are today. We certainly would not be giving a concert. So with that being said, Mr. Bonville, come out here. <laughs> That's us. expecting for a percussion ensemble opening, right? And bang and boom and boom and bang and bang and, bang and all that. But um, that's just uh, this really haunting melody by Eric Satie. Uh, it turns up in movies and TV shows all over the place. And um, I'm just going to talk about, see the kids are moving now. So this is, this is showbiz. So this, this, is the, this is the segue in, in the middle here. Um, it turns up in a lot of different shows and all. And um, Satie says he was inspired to write it. Um, from watching acrobats from the Paris circus, like frolicking in the park. Um, I think he was also influenced a bit by American jazz, which was starting to, to come over too at the same time. But, um, but that's that. So, um, so right now, um, we're gonna launch into one of America's greatest composers, Irving Berlin, in a song that I just loved when I was a little kid. And I still do, so um, they have to do it. So, um, <laughs> so this is uh, I Wonder Why.
wondering about this. Um, over the COVID, um, Nicole, um, who you just heard before, um, who is uh, president of the RMA and uh, Grand Poobah of everything, and, um, who I call my chief of staff. I always pick one person each year who I, I can really rely on, and that, of course, has been Nicole. Well, she was asking me, um, I know you went to school for music. What was your instrument? So I was a percussion major. She said, well, what in particular? And I said, well, I, I majored in the washboard. So <laughs> she really wanted me to include that in a couple of charts. So here it is. So it, it, washboard with a minor in timpani. So. <laughs> February 6, 1964. Anyone? 1964? Anyone? Okay, I'm the oldest part in the room, right? Who is that? Well, that was the day the Beatles performed on Ed Sullivan television on a Sunday night. I was 10 years old. Changed my life. <laughs> it made my life. So uh, here's a Beatles tune. Thank you. 
was over there. And uh, she said, yeah, I'd like to play. So under Nicole's careful, where's the gravity, not here. Under Nicole's careful formal tutelage, um, Rita became quite the vibraphone artist, playing four mallets and everything. And I wrote her a really tough part. It's like the synthesizer part right off the record. And she's done good. Thank you for being good. <laughs> Thank you, Mariah. <laughs> Here's another, I think you'll recognize Spanish Harlem. I just like this song, too. one I wish I wrote. <laughs> I wish I wrote a lot of them.
Welcome to our symphonic band. Perfect. Okay. Now, over the years, um, for, the, for those of you who have been putting up with me for like the last 10 years here, um, we, we've had a lot of terrific concerts, a lot of, a lot of great concerts. And uh, my friend Bob Button and I, we've done a, a lot of writing for, uh, for all of our different bands. Um, this band here, this is, this band is really special, I have to tell you. Um, like Nicole already said, um, you know, we missed a couple of years for COVID. Well, the 19 people that, that you see here, uh, we are the smallest symphonic band that we've, we've, that we've ever had here. But we are the bravest, right? <laughs> you know, so seriously, these, these, 19, these 19 kids went through a lot this year, I mean, academically, like, you know, restricted to their rooms. And um, Nicole helped to keep all of this together by saying, hey, JP, why don't you do a Thursday night um, web broadcast and stuff? So, so we were able to keep symphonic people together and just talk about music and, and keep that going. Uh, but when the, the chance finally came to actually put more than four people in a room, um, you know, so, so first it was four, so I did a whole bunch of writing for quartets. Then it was eight, and I did a whole, you know, for octets and all that. And then pretty soon we were able to put more people in the room. And um, so uh, I've had to pick a lot of different kinds of things and do a lot of kinds of different arrangements. And, um, but we all made it work. So like, um, I just did my job, which of course I love. But these kids here, they had, to, you know, they had to put the mask on. They had to risk infection. They had, you know, all, all the, uh, the difficult things that they had to do in the regular classes all year. Um, then they gave up Thursday night to come in and to see if we could keep some music going, keep the symphonic band going here. So um, this is the bravest group, uh, the hardest working. And uh, again, because of COVID, some of the kids getting sick and the quarantine and all, uh, we, this is actually the second time that we've all been together in the same room you know, the, this, this year. Now, I'm not making an excuse. It's going to be wonderful. But, you know, you know, we, we have not all been together. It, it's, it's really been a difficult year. And um, the thing that I miss about it, because I'm selfish, um, I, I miss some of the kids. Some of the kids graduated over the last couple of years. I didn't get to see them, you know? And so um, I'm, I'm kind of selfish about that. So I, I am really happy that, that I'm getting to see some of these great kids. And, um, and I'm so grateful to them for keeping this going. So anyway, we got a bunch of different stuff. We got some Mozart and Bach and all those dead dudes. And um, <laughs> we hope you like it. This is a piece by Mozart, the um, overture to his opera, The Marriage of Figaro. And at the time, I mean, this was considered um, pretty radical music um, at the time, the way Mozart wrote, and just the subject matter, because this guy, Figaro, the barber of Seville, he kind of uh, led to the American and the French revolutions when people you know, started to pay attention to this. So Mozart got himself in a little bit of trouble, but it's just a terrific, uh, terrific overture.
know, during COVID, there's a lot of time for TV watching. So um, my wife and I are watching, um, uh, I think it was a Netflix thing, on uh, Queen Elizabeth and the history and all that. So Dead the Big Sea was her coronation and all that. And I heard this hymn. Wow. Honey, I'll be right back. And um, I went down to my computer and, uh, a couple days later. So, um, I came back with this. And this is a hymn from England. Um, that I wish I
Sometimes I give myself puzzles just to see if I can do it or not. So you can be the judge. This is box fugue in G minor, except it's in F minor, because G minor is a bad key for bands to play. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Though. But um, you be the judge. And luckily, I got the man Joe to start this off. So we should be okay.